the S P five hundred and the Nasdaq one hundred as we jump in here, we can see a few levels that we tracked on the day. Pretty monstrous if we look at the candle, but that's because of some of the earnings that came in in the after hours. But let's talk about the action on the day first. Number one, we weren't surprised to see kind of the chop. We had some push in like 17.5, and we kind of sat there for a better part of the day, as you can see. You get this massive candles once the market closes, but as you can see, just slow, steady, just chop at the top. That's ultimately what today's action really was. Um, but again, you are making higher lows still so far since the low that we did make. That is a good note. You're making a higher high now, trying to break the overall structure of that downtrend. That's another good note to be seeing. We have our Lux levels up here on 17.9, 18K. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is our next level. This is the level we want to see tested around 18K, 17.95. That is the big level that will dictate how we move going into, you know, May and early summer. Okay. Now, also, too, we go into what's happening with ES. I'm going to go over spying cues here in a second as well. But, you know, ES holding up very well. Holding above 5090. Again, that was your previous 2021 high. Boom. Very important. Also holding 5000. Those are both very good notes to see. We ended the day right at resistance here in the after hours as well. But, again, the top dogs here that held us and helped us. Microsoft after hours pushing up 415 good earnings again Google smashed earnings like I said they haven't had great earnings over the past year but now they're chiming in now the AI is working now everything they're doing is kind of finally coming together destroying expectations probably the best move they've had on earnings in over two years um, so really big there definitely helping Intel lackluster to say the least just kind of chopping around nothing crazy Intel just never does anything good going to tell you that right now. Um, so that's the big thing there. Going into SPY, what are we looking at? Again, getting, you know, end of the day here. Closing it on 508.3, above 508.3, you're cooking back to the upside near 516, 515. That's easy. Qs, NASDAQ, tech. Again, good looks here so far. You're holding up here, right? You're holding those lows you made. That's what you had to hold. You're holding 421.5, that key level we talked about. Pushing back into 430. Over 432.7, you are cooking, in my opinion, back up to 440. Those are massive levels. Now, I will say, earnings season is not over. On Tuesday this coming week, you're going to have Amazon and Apple. Very big. Now, to start the day off, we had some overall, some bad news. You had GDP showing a growth on the annual perspective, showing the pace of 1.6%. I believe expectations were 2.5%. Yeah, bad 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 miss okay so growth is definitely slowing down now the fed has said this is kind of some of the things that they want to start to see so it's not necessarily a bad look but it's something that we need to keep track of and now let's briefly talk about my favorite investing app and the sponsor of today's video if you're interested in trading the exact same broker in which i'm using for options and when i'm doing market research on this is exactly who i'm using this is Moomoo. this is their platform on their desktop you can also check it out for the mobile app as well this is their live news feed and if you're thinking about making the switch right now is a pretty good time because right now they're doing a 1.5% cash reward up to $300 if you trade. Or if you're just getting started, Moomoo Moo is giving you $5 worth of fractional shares in each of the max seven stocks when you make a qualified deposit. All that information will be down below. But if you're interested, the link is down below to get started with Moomoo. It's who I use. It's how I'm trading. Let's get back to the video. Also, jumping back into this, tomorrow we do have PCE inflation, right? And about an hour before market open. That's going to dictate movement as well. So although we had good earnings, I'm telling you right now, PC is the biggest measure of what's happening with inflation. And the Fed has openly said it's their favorite data pool to look at when it regards to inflation, unless you're looking at super court. So those are things that we're looking at in the morning. I'll have an update for you as well. Uh, make sure you're following on Twitter. I'll have it all posted there. Um, but yeah, that's what we're looking at here. So broad markets, not terrible. Like I said, this week was really clear. I, I, I don't think it could have been more clear when I look at how we've moved. You dropped all on that Israel-Iran news. The back and forth, that's when you dropped. Guys, you didn't drop because of rates. You didn't drop because of the inflation. You didn't drop because of that stuff, guys. You just didn't, right? And so when people try to deny that, and we can look at the facts, we can look at the data on the days that this we've had the biggest drops, it's all been based on Israel and Iran based in the Middle East. Now that's cooled off. Guess what happened over the past few days? We've been bouncing, seeing buyers step in more aggressively. You know, that's not surprising. Okay. Now we have good earnings as well. This could, this is the same thing that led us into a strong summer last year. You remember uh, same, same situation. 
things to be considering you're seeing the dxy pull back as well we want to see more pullback there for sure we need more of a pullback there the us 30-year yield we need to see this start to pull back but i will say though again you know we go back to may of last year march you started seeing that dip a little chop 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 once you ripped up after the summer hit that's when you already started to get the pullback so again if we start to get one of these pullbacks here on the 30-year yield just like we did here back in november what happened in november through december what happened right and what's incredible here is that yields are pushing up like this and the market is still so resilient right the fear and greed index right fear greed index want to make this clear okay very clear you're in the fear sector right the market people want to say oh we're crashing we're this we're that you know let's be realist here let's be realist right you're crashing boys yeah we're crashing it's half the size of our pullback that we had back in july through october when they said we're going back down to lows remember that i remember right so those are things to consider you're you're I mean, come on like what are we talking about here on top of that your fear and greed index very low here so what are, what am, what am i highlighting here if we start to get aggressive buying we get back into that greed territory more uh, you know risk on for instance things start to remotely go well from the fed because we're not getting any good news from the fed just telling you that right now what do you think is going to happen to the market do we do we think it's going to slow down do we do we do we think it's not going to get buying what has happened in the past right that's why i say i'm not opposed to trading the downside if you followed me in the past week then you saw i would trade the downside but i would much rather trade the strong trend right which is clearly to the upside over the past year and a half right and that's where i'm sticking so again i'm looking for a push into 18,795. how we right there will be key i'll have updates for you on twitter let's go quickly over a few stocks as well nvidia you have earnings i believe like middle of this coming month um but you're holding 824 very bullish above that level for me you're into 841 over 841 862 then 877 so i think you can start getting strength there amd probably one of the bigger value plays out there right now so amd above 51 and then 52.5 is very good you're looking for uh 158.7 that's your previous swing low you had there above that you're looking back for 164.5 that's your 2021 high that's what you need to be watching this is your line in the sand right now you get back above 2021 highs you're looking for a push into your 174.7 one of our big levels there netflix keep an eye on i'm going to tell you right now two stocks you need to keep an eye on i love them I, guys you got, I, I love a lot of these names but netflix i'm telling you right now if netflix i mean this is one of the juiciest setups that you're going to have you're setting up for a double bottom down here we look for a neckline break above around 580 above 580 this is a gimme into 593 and then back to previous lows gap filled under 604 much watch on your chart over the next few weeks meta meta dipped i don't think meta deserved to dip like this i'm going to tell you right now you did not fill the gap on meta so i think i got to be careful but you are just massively grotesquely illiquid here i'm looking for a test into 453 if you get any type of upside break, um, you know, you break highs of the day from today, easy money, upside. That's what I'm looking for there. Keep it really simple. No reason to overcomplicate it, okay? Tesla. I've tweeted about this earlier today. Tesla's, a, Tesla's, it's finally doing something. You had the ascending triangle. You broke. You started pushing up to 172 now. Looking for 175. You start getting back over 175 on Tesla. Guys, you start getting back over this. You're cooking. You have room right we this becomes a real trade opportunity okay back into 180 now also too if you're interested in our lux levels and everything here code od40 for 40 percent off the link is down below for all of our indicators so make sure you check that out as well but that's what you're looking for i mean this could start really moving you get back above 180 you could really move back into 194 we all remember the 194 level so again tesla a little, little trade on the day but again i'm liking the strength coming back into a lot of buyers stepping back in you're seeing the momentum flip there as well we don't want to fall in love with the trade, but we like the opportunity that the trade is providing. Okay. Um, now I'm going to tell you this right now with this. Um, uh, I don't like to go too much into earnings. I really don't, but I'm going to tell you guys right now, Apple is a must watch into next week for earnings. It is a must. If there was one stock that I was just itching for besides like Google, because Google finally had some good AI stuff. Look, I think Apple is simply put it's as simple as this. Apple has more opportunity to the upside than it does to the downside here. It is one of the most beat up names. It's one of the most undervalued broad market mag seven. It is the most undervalued magnificent seven name besides maybe Tesla, 
But that it, it is that simple, right? It is that simple. They need any amount of good news, and it will slingshot them up towards 180. I'm telling you right now, it is a must-watch on this coming week. I I can only say that so many times. So 100%, make sure you're watching this. Make sure it's on the top of your list. Because, again, we saw what happened. Remember, we mentioned it down here, and we ran from, I, I couldn't believe it. But you ran from 168 to 178 like a, in a day, day and a half, right? I'm telling you right now, when buyers step back into Apple, good things will happen. So, again, I'm not saying to YOLO for earnings, but I'm saying you got to be watching this thing because it's, I believe it could start getting momentum just like Tesla got momentum this week, right? It's just nothing's been going good for it. So, any sign of hope will get buyers back into this, right? So, that's the focus here. And, you want, and you're hoping that they mentioned something to do with Google's AI and what they're going to be doing with the new iPhone, right? That's the best case scenario for Apple. That's what you got to be watching, okay? Semiconductor is probably my strongest area of the market as well. Microsoft trying to get some more strength, bouncing back up. But I've gone over most of the big names. I like Amazon as well. You have earnings coming up back above 180. It's going to be cooking. But those are the names I'm liking. Those are the names I'm trading. If you have questions, comment down below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one, traders.